we've got um, Shane Hasty here with us today, um, all the way from New Zealand. Just so happens that we're both actually coming to you from New Zealand today. And um, and this session is sponsored by IC Agile. You'll notice that Shane has a good connection with those guys. Um, and so we'd love to thank IC Agile for helping to sponsor the conference. We're really thrilled to have Shane here with us today. So um, without any further ado, Shane, it's all over to you. Cool. John, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, folks. Kia ora. All right. Present. Welcome, folks. Thank you very much indeed. So, yeah, um, as John says, I'm with, said, I'm with IC Agile. I'm the Director of Community Development. But what I'm talking about today is looking broadly at the ethics of Agile coaching. So the first thing I'd like to explore is to get you to um, tell me. So I'd like you to go to menti.com and enter the code 26037441. So please go to menti.com, enter the code 26037441, and just put in your um, explanation, your definition of ethical. So when you think about something is ethical, what does that mean to you? And I'll pop up what we're going to see in the poll. So again, thank you, doing the right thing. Workmanship, integrity, dedicated. Doing good, morally correct, honest, acceptable. Do the right thing, integrity. True to yourself, legitimate, dedicated. Trust, doing good, honest. Bound by values, oh, lovely, inclusive. Discipline. What is right? Honest, honesty, morally correct. So we kind of seem to have a reasonably good consensus about what ethical implies and means. And I'll leave this up for a while. And to, uh, after the session, I will uh, download these results and include them in the slide, share, slide set that I will share. But let's come back and explore. So what, what are we going to track through today? We have a bit of a lag on the slides. Um, so my screen currently says the our agenda. So I'll just let that catch up slowly. The, and the, the topics I want to explore, ethics, coaching, the ethics of coaching, and then I want to explore agile coaching as, as a, a style and approach to coaching, and then the ethics of agile coaching. So oh, there, there we are, it's caught up. So there, there is a bit of a lag on the, on the tooling, but that's okay. Um, just please bear with us as we move forward. So the next thing, uh, starting into this, let's look at, at ethics. Uh, what are some things that we have seen from an ethical perspective? And the, some of you will probably remember the Volkswagen emissions scandal. Interestingly, the, um, for those that aren't aware of it, there was software in the uh, engine control system of a particular model of Volkswagen vehicle that was deliberately designed to change the engine emissions when the um, tool, the, the, the monitoring system was plugged into it. So when the vehicle was running, the engine emissions were at one level, but when it was in the testing center, 
it actually changed the, the behavior of the engine to reduce the emissions. Um, and interestingly, from a uh, yeah, from an ethical perspective and, and from a dilemma perspective, the person who went to prison as a result of this fraudulent behavior was the engineer who wrote the code, not the manager who told them what to do. Now, the company was penalized quite extensively with a large fine, but the engineer who wrote the code is the one that ended up in prison. Um, other examples, the, the references again in the slides, the Cambridge Analytica um, scandal during uh, uh, in the last US election, who knows what's going on in this current one. Uh, the Australian banking research uh, and the um, overcharging elements there and the uh, large uh, uh, government um, investigation that explored that and, again, massive penalties. Uh, the next slide, which will pop up hopefully very shortly, is talking about, uh, and there's a link in there to an article from medium.com, where the a website displays, you know, there are X many people looking at this product right now to create that feeling of urgency. But when you um, right click in your browser and you say display the code, it's not a live update at all. It's a random number generator. Every five seconds, select a random number between three and 14 and display that to the customer. Yeah, not exactly honest behavior. And we know we have truth in advertising and so forth, but uh, hmm. So the um, ethics, this quote from a BBC series, at its simplest, ethics is a system of moral principles. They affect how people make decisions and lead their lives. Ethics is concerned for what is good for individuals and society and is also described as a moral philosophy. Mm, how does that impact us? And how does that bring us into elements of coaching? So let's, let's talk about coaching itself. And I'm drawing here on, from the, the definition from the International Coach Federation. So just bringing us back to my topic of the ethics of agile coaching, and let's talk about coaching itself. ICF defines coaching as partnering with clients in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. And hopefully the screen sharing will catch up any moment. So coaching, one of the things that I want to challenge is the common perspective that coaching is telling people what to do. And particularly in agile coaching, we see a lot of that. Um, the, the coach is the, the process police person. They are defining the process, the agile process, the organization must take, and they are mandating. Um, common structure I see is agile coaches falling under the uh, the remit of the, the project management office in large organizations. That's where they're uh, reporting to and, and they're engaged to determine the organization's agile approach and to make sure that everyone adheres with that. But if we look at this concept of coaching from the ICF, partnering with clients in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them 
to maximize their personal and potential and professional potential, that's contradictory to a lot of what we see in the wild in agile coaching. The next slide that's coming up, hopefully soon, explores the competencies that the ICF talks about. And the first of the competencies that the ICF has, it's their number one element, is meeting ethical guidelines and professional standards. Then they go on and talk about establishing a coaching agreement, establishing trust and intimacy with the client, having a coaching presence, active listening, powerful questioning, direct communication, creating awareness, designing actions, planning and goal setting, and managing progress and accountability. So there's some of that in a lot of agile coaching. But there's also a lot of it missing. And I want to explore what that really means to us. In a conversation with Lisa Atkins, we were asking, you know, what, what do you mean by ethics and um, morals in an agile coaching environment? And Lisa used the term that, that really resonated with me. What is the up with which you will not put? What is your personal line in the sand? So as an ethical coach or somebody taking an ethical perspective, the, it, it is incumbent upon you to first and foremost know yourself, to understand yourself, to be able to uh, know what your own moral compass is, what your own ethics, where, uh, um, what is your, what are your limits? Where will you step away? And then you can start having conversations with, with others about helping, guiding, supporting, assisting them. But this starting with self is a very, very important aspect of, of ethics. And in the, in the slides, I have a, a quote that is on the outside of a building in Atlanta where Martin Luther King was, um, had his offices at one point. And it says, you are personally responsible for becoming more ethical than the society you grew up in. Now think about that. You are personally more uh, responsible for becoming more ethical than the society that you grew up in. How does that start to play out? And if you're an agile coach, how does that land for you? The next thing I want to talk about, and I want to leave you just pondering that one for a while, let it stew in the background. Um, the, there are coaching organizations. There's, there's two in particular that have published codes of ethics. The International Coach, Coach Federation is one, and there's another um, organization that's just published a global code of ethics for coaching. And they look at different elements, the responsibility to clients in the ICF, responsibility to practice and performance, responsibility to professionalism, and responsibility to society. And uh, if you want to get hold of these, the, the again, in my slides, which I will make available, they, they are the International Coach Federation. Just look for their code of ethics. And the other one is globalcodeofethics.org. And they talk about working with clients, professional conduct, and excellent practice as the three broad areas that coaches need to focus on in terms of their ethical practice and behaviors. And there's a, a lovely quote that I've pulled out from the, uh, the ICF. The challenge of working ethically means that members will inevitably encounter situations that require responses to unexpected issues. 
resolutions of dilemmas and solutions to problems. Now, if the sharing was working well, I would have left you to read this yourself, but forgive me for reading out a slide. This code of ethics is intended to assist those persons subject to the code by directing them to the variety of ethical factors that may need to be taken into consideration and helping to identify alternative ways of approaching ethical behavior. ICF professionals who accept the code of ethics strive to be ethical even when doing so involves making difficult decisions or acting courageously. It's, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where knowing thyself and being able to stand up and say, no, that is wrong. And having that, call it a moral compass. So that's the ethics from coaching, from a coaching perspective. Now I want to explore the agile coaching. And if you're not aware of this, I would, I would point you to the Agile Coaching Institute and Lisa Adkins, a model that Lisa Adkins and Michael Spade and others put together. And it's been released under the Creative Commons license for that's it's often called the X-Wing. It talks about the competencies that an agile coach needs to have. And it's a, a, a diagram with four broad quadrants in an X format. At the top, you have the agile lean practitioner, somebody who applies the agile practices and lives the agile values. If you're an agile coach, you start from the perspective of having that deep, deep, solid DNA level ingrained um, view of agile practices and agile values. Then on the, the right hand side of the model, there are the two uh, competencies that are neutral in terms of content. That is professional coaching, partnering with clients in a creative process that inspires their personal and professional potential. So drawing heavily on that, the ideas from the ICF and also facilitating a neutral process holder who guides groups through processes then help them come to solutions and make decisions. So on the one side are the neutral elements and then on the other side of the, the, the third quadrant of this diagram are the content elements. And these are teaching and mentoring. So as an agile coach, yes, you will at times be required to teach teams and, and individuals how to do things, how to apply different agile practices and, and so forth. And likewise, you will be called upon to mentor individuals. So teaching groups and mentoring individuals, sharing your skill and knowledge and helping them to understand and become better at their practice. Uh, because on the one hand, the coach, the, the professional coach looks at, an, at a, at, at a from, takes the perspective that the the coachee, the person being coached, has the solution to their own problem. And my job is to help them find that. But if they genuinely don't have that solution, then we need to provide them with content, with knowledge. And that's where the teaching and or mentoring come into play in this model. And then the fourth quadrant at the at the bottom of the diagram, in the at the bottom of the X, is the various levels of mastery. She, they talk about technical mastery, business mastery, and transformation mastery being the three competency areas. And you have to have competency all around the X-Wing, but the depth that you will go to in the different areas will be different for every individual. If I think of myself, I have a level of technical mastery, but I'm able to uh, admit that I'm no longer the world's best programmer. I last wrote code in anger in 2011. So if you wanted a coach who's going to help you, help you to um, 
implement a DevOps solution, I'm probably not the right person. On the other hand, the business mastery area is where I feel I have the depth and the strength and the and the experience that yes, I can help um, with the in the product management space and the product ownership space. So if that's where your your organization and your team is struggling, well, I'm your person. On the other hand, the third of those elements, the transformation mastery, I don't have the depth that many of my colleagues and other people do who've worked at that transformation level in large organizations. So again, I might be able to advise, but I can't bring a lot of that depth. So as a, an agile coach, I need to first of all know myself and be able to be honest with my coachees, whether that's the organization, the team, or the individual about where my competencies lie in the mastery areas. So I'd ask you to consider thinking about the coaches that you know and that you've worked with. Where have you seen those elements, particularly I'm going to, to hone in on the mastery areas, because this is one that I think is, we often overstretch ourselves. I might not know about the area, but there's a bid, I'm coming in from outside. I can, I can, yeah, I can, I can pretend I know about this and then I'll, I'll go and learn it just ahead of, of, of the team and then I'll teach them. And that's okay, provided I've been clear and open and honest with everyone involved. This is what I'm doing. I'm not, I haven't got the depth of knowledge there. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to work one step ahead of you. We will learn together. If I've done that, if I've communicated it in that way, then I have been ethical in my behavior. On the other hand, if I've taken on this contract and I'm not telling anyone at all that, you know what, I've never done this before, but I can do it. And I've seen a lot of harm done through that process. So. If we think of agility and comparing the, the, the model that I've spoken about in terms of the way that the professional coaching institute talks about the coach as the person with, the, with no skin in the game, they're neutral in terms of process, and then the agile coach looking at that uh, X-wing diagram from the agile coaching institute. There's, there is, in the work of the Agile Coach, there is a deliberate bias towards agility. And myself and Craig Smith have been working with a group of 23 people, 23, 24 people, under the auspices of the Agile Alliance to come up with a code of ethical conduct for Agile Coaching. The first thing that we looked at was, do we need one? Could we just borrow one of those existing code of ethics, um, particularly the ICF or that uh, global code of, code of ethics? Both really solid, well thought out, well defined codes of ethical conduct for neutral coaching. And that's where we tripped over and said, you know what, that doesn't work. As an agile coach, I do bring this deliberate and positive bias towards agility as opposed to the client has the answer and I'm helping them figure it out. There will be times when actually what I'm doing is I'm showing them a path. I want, though, not to impose that path on them, but to invite them on a journey. And, it, and this is one of the, the important characteristics of, in, in our minds, that ethical coaching, that you're not 
as the coach coming in and saying, thou shalt work like this. It's here are some ideas. Here is what we have seen. Come on a journey with us and let's explore this together in your context. And through this group, we looked at, okay, what would, what are the things that a, a code of ethics for agile coaching should contain? We had a lot of debate about what should be in there and what shouldn't. So, and, we, and we came to some guidelines that we've used. So what makes something an ethical consideration? We've got three criteria. To be an ethical consideration, a topic needs to be someone that they can do as soon as they sign up to the code. A new, a novice agile coach, somebody who's just at the beginning of their coaching journey can read the statement and apply this immediately in practicing their profession. They don't need extra training to figure out what this is. In order to be an ethical consideration, it must be something where there is broad agreement that violating this principle causes harm or risks causing harm to myself, to the profession, or to others if I do not buy, abide by the statement. And a very important thing that we looked at was what is this, this spans the breadth of agile coaching? So it was coaching, not coach. And the, these points must be applicable to people who are internal coaches, external coaches, and those practicing agile coaching as part of another role. For example, a manager who is expected to be a coach or somebody in the role of the scrum master taking on some or all aspects of agile coaching. So it's not about a job title. It is about that doing coaching. And having identified these, we then came up with nine broad areas. And again, I am going to read these out because our screen sharing isn't working well here, but um, they, they are included in the slide deck that I will share after the session. So first and foremost, as an, as an ethical agile coach, I commit myself to the following. And the first topic, confidentiality and information security. And it, each of these topics has one or two sentences that we've, that we've expanded to, I will protect information shared with me and won't disclose it without agreement or legal reason. The second one, acting within your ability. I will be open and transparent about my skills and experience, and I won't claim to have abilities or knowledge that I do not have. There's the, I need to be open and honest, acting within my ability. And the second point there, I will be honest with the client if I believe they need another form of professional help. So if coaching is not what they need, I'm not going to continue the relationship, even though it might make money. I'm going to step away and say, I'm not the right person for you. The next one, introspection and continuing professional development. I will engage in introspection and I will engage with a peer group or mentor to explore other uh, ethical and other challenges in my agile coaching work. I'm not going to hold myself up, self up as the fountain of all knowledge. I'm going to, I am going to be part of a community. I will seek to improve my self-awareness and effectiveness through professional development. The next topic, conflicts of interest. I will be transparent about any potential conflict of interests conflicts of interest with all who may be affected, and I won't act with dishonor. I will withdraw from the relationship if a conflict conflict cannot be adequately managed. There are times when there is a legitimate conflict of interest. We're open and honest about it. Everyone understands that, and that's okay. I'm not going to keep it hidden, and if that cannot be adequately managed, I'm going to step away. Social responsibility, including diversity and inclusion, is the next topic. I will seek opportunities to bring different voices to the conversation, and I won't condone, allow, or perpetuate discrimination in any form. 
by my action and inaction, I will strive to, to leave society better than I found it. The next bullet point by ensuring the relationship is valuable for both coach and client. I will ensure that the relationship remains valuable and I won't extend it unnecessarily. I will be honest about any perception of declining value. Then the agreeing on boundaries. I will ensure we have an agreed scope. I will work with the client to understand their needs rather than impose my own solution. I will not collude with an organization that is pursuing purposes at odds with the Agile Manifesto's values and principles. So that deep Agile practitioner. The next one, the abuse of power. I will not abuse my power to influence others for personal gain. And we've had some discussion whether we even need that for personal gain. It will just, I will not abuse my power to influence others, full stop. And then the last point is responsibility to the profession. I will uphold the reputation of the agile coaching profession. I won't condone and will challenge, uh, challenge unethical behavior in other agile coaches. I will attribute others' ideas appropriately and avoid the, the appearance that they are mine. So those are the nine broad areas, confidentiality and information security, acting within your ability, introspection and continuing professional development, conflicts of interest, social responsibility, ensuring the relationship is valuable to both client and coach, agree on boundaries, Abu agreeing on boundaries, abuse of power, and responsibility to the profession. We feel that if every Agile coach behaved within those boundaries, we would see better outcomes in the coaching amongst the organizations who are the victims of our coaching implementations. What have we missed? So I'd like to open this up. And please go back to that, that Menti poll, and I will move to the next point. So again, menti.com and the code 2603741. What have we missed? What should an ethical framework for agile coaching contain? And I'm going to copy into the chat window those nine points. So the Menti code, menti.com code 2603741. 23. 26, 26, 0, 3, 7, 4, 1 is the code. Um, so I've copied in the first one, then there's the second. Of course, in the chat window, it's not nicely formatted. But hopefully you can read it. We make do with the tools that work for us. Nice to see some topics coming in here. The agility and approach, honesty and openness, respect for current state and journey so far. Be an active listener, build trust, empathy, work with the team for their development only. 
zooming out and self-reflection on a periodic basis. What support are we expecting from the client? It's a two-way framework. Do no harm. Ethical framework should not have a, any personal profit. We will always have to remember we have to listen to others and give them a chance to open up. Adaptability to change, courage, openness and transparency, empathy. I will not claim to know things that I don't. Encourage courage. Open and honest, build trust, unbias. Respect for others, customer centricity. Understand the business needs of the client. Don't push for agile transformation. You know, agile is not the, the sole solution to everything. Being transparent, be open, offer and seek help. Resiliency as a coach, that, that's self-support. Understanding the journey of the client. And don't dismiss all previous earlier work as bad. Passion, compassion, and empathy. Mutual understanding, respect for people. Wonderful. Thank you, folks. Courage. Courage, courage, courage coming through. Okay. Um, just to... We're coming close to time. I mean, yeah, we've got just a couple of minutes left. Um, have you got questions that people want to ask? Um, we've got just a couple... <clears throat> couple in the Q and A. Mm -hmm. um, I just pushed the wrong button. <laughs> um, someone was wanting you, I think, to expand a little bit more on the concept of the moral compass. This was asked by Sandeep uh, Merotra. The, the moral compass is is what you see when you look in the mirror. What is your set of values, principles, what guides you. And this is this comes back to knowing knowing yourself. Now, your values that, that they may they're influenced, we pick them up very early in life, but they also are adapting and responding and, and evolving over over time. So yeah. Sandeep, does that make sense? But it starts it truly does start by know you know thyself, know yourself, and the what Lisa had to say in terms of what is the up with which you will not put. What's your own personal boundary? Now the work of this group is under the auspices of the Agile Alliance, and on the Alliance there there is a. Let me find that. I'll share this link as well the Agile Coaching Initiative, and that set of bullet points that I read through that are part of the um, uh, that, that make up our first draft of the um, of the Code of Ethics. That has been that will be released on the IC, uh, on the Agile Alliance website very soon. We're waiting for it to be to be published, and there's an email address there that where we're asking for feedback. The next step in the journey of this group, once we have this uh, set of bullet points published, is we're going on and we're producing what we're calling the ethics stories. So for each of those bullet points, we want to give examples that people can drill into. And we're looking at examples of what is ethical behavior in that context, what would unethical behavior be in that context. And then we have the hard one. What is a, a gray area? And in that gray area, how will you, um, how do you make decisions? So what are the factors that come into play? Because it's in the gray area where things are really hard. And we want to provide advice and guidance, and not by not in terms of a set of rules, but here are the things to consider. And that's what the group is currently working on, producing those. We hope to release those sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, 
We've got another couple of questions here just to, to rip through. We're running out of time. <clears throat> just to let everyone know that there will be a chance to talk to Shane after this uh, in, a, in a, a, a meeting room. Um, so if you've got questions, um, we'll tell you how to get there in just a moment. We'll try and get, rip through a couple of more questions, though, just before we finish. Someone's asked, um, how do you deal with resistance to agile coaching? First point from there is why is there resistance? Is it because you are imposing coaching on them? Is agile being implemented as a, a top-down imperative? And as a coach, I'm coming in as the, as the process police. Well, I'm sorry, that's not coaching, that's consulting. As a coach, I'm offering and I'm inviting people on a journey. The journey is in their hands. And if there is resistance, then there is something, there is a good solid reason behind that resistance. Let's work that out and figure it out together. Don't assume that resistance is because the person being coached is somehow wrong. Maybe what's being done to them is not right. All right. Next question. Uh, mm -hmm. In the name of Agile, can you tell me if ignoring a deadline is good? That's from Rohit. <laughs> we have to be responsible corporate citizens. So irrespective of your brand or model, we're part of an organization that has a requirement of us that we deliver stuff. Now, is the deadline reasonable or unreasonable? Because this goes both ways. This is a, um, is the organization supporting the people or the people supporting the organization? And a mandatory imposed deadline with no valid reason, and I'm afraid in many organizations that's what deadlines are, they're a number that a senior manager has made up because it feels good to them. It has nothing to do with the ability of the teams to actually deliver. Well, at the very least, there's a need for a conversation about that. But if everyone is being open, honest, and truthful, then we can have that genuine conversation about what is what the deadline is and what it isn't. All right, we'll have one last question. We're, we're over time, but these are good questions, so we'll throw one more in there. Being a coach, how can we build a coaching culture open to getting coached, open to seeking help, and opening open to things that can be solved by seeking support? That's from Shakti. Well, I'm going to go to the Gandhi quote. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Start off by doing that for yourself and invite others along on that journey. We included the, that, that um, professional development as a key element of the, of the, code of, of, the code of conduct, that introspection, introspection and continuing professional development. Because we know that as a coach on your own, you haven't got all of the answers, but as a community of coaches, and I will point you to, uh, if you're looking for opportunities to build that coaching muscle, to the Agile Coaching Circles, and it's agilecoachingcircles.org. There is a, and there are a number of them around the world that are designed to support coaches in learning their profession. All right, and I, one one last well, one last thing before we one last one last thing, um, how to handle conflicts of interest within an agile team? Start off by making them visible. What are the conflicts? Where do they exist? Why do they exist? Be absolutely visible and transparent, and then say, okay, what is the implication to us as a team about these conflicts? and trust the team to figure it out. 
And if that means that I, as a coach, need to step away, then if the conflict, if that conflict of interest is is between myself and and something else on on that team, well, then maybe I need to be stepping away. You know, I won't act with dishonor. I will withdraw from the right and from the relationship if if a conflict cannot be adequately managed. Those are the things, the points that we put into the the conflict of interest element. But thank you, Shane. That is, it's been a great session. There's been lots of interesting um, things to, to, to ponder, to think about, and to um, to take away and implement uh, in, our, in our work. Thanks, everyone. It's been great. Thanks, folks.